So in this problem, we're told a 25 kilogram box is released on a 27 degree incline and accelerates down the incline at 0.3 meters per second squared. Find the friction force impeding its motion and also what is the coefficient of kinetic friction. So first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. So we have this incline and we know we have a box on it with a mass of 25 kilograms and it's going to go down it at 0.3 meters per second squared. So that's its acceleration. And so we're going to be solving for two things. We're going to try and find the frictional force, I'll denote that by FF, so we'll say it equals question mark. And then we're also trying to find the coefficient of kinetic friction, also known as mu sub k. So we'll just say both those equal question mark because we're going to have to solve for it. So whenever you're given a problem with a box on an incline like this and you're dealing with forces, I always recommend drawing the free body diagram first. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me zoom in here. So what we want to do is label all the forces. So the first force I'm going to label is the normal force, which we know acts opposite to the place it's on. So there's going to be a normal force pushing upwards against the box. So we're going to draw it like this. And so another thing to keep in mind when we're doing this, you always want to have an X and Y axis in your mind. So when you have an incline, you want to treat the incline this as your X axis. So you'll see that this line is basically your X axis. And then perpendicular to that is going to be your Y axis. So you can draw it through the box if you'd like, like this. And so it's supposed to be perpendicular to this, but this is essentially your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So when I refer to the x-axis and y-axis later on in this problem, just that's what I'm talking about. So keep in mind the normal force is going to act along this y-axis because it's perpendicular to the plane, which is our x-axis. So we have the normal force labeled. Then we also want to label the force of friction. So we know it's going to travel this way. And so the force of friction always acts opposite to the direction it travels. So the force of friction is going to act along our x-axis this way. So we can label FF because it's going to go down this way. And so the last force acting on it is the force due to gravity. And so gravity always acts straight down relative, like just straight down this way. So if you look at the box here, it's going to be straight down. So basically like that. And so I'm just going to call this F of G. So the force due to gravity. And then when you do these though, you always want to if you have a force that's not acting on the X or Y axis, you want to split it into its components that are. So F of G, we want to put it into its X component and Y component form. So the way we do that is I like to draw a little triangle like this. And so you'll see that this line here is supposed to be perpendicular parallel to the plane. And then this line here is going to be along our Y axis. And so I'm going to label this F G of X and F G of Y. Let me actually draw an arrow like this. So this is F G of Y. And so the reason we do that is because now this basically is the y component of our gravity and it's along the y axis and this is our fg of x which is along the x axis because it's uh, parallel to it so just imagine this is basically on this line uh but yeah so now that we have all of our forces labeled and on their correct ax correct uh right it's on its correct axis right we have fg of y and fg of x for f of g now what we're going to want to do is actually solve this problem so the way we're going to do it is by summing the forces well, we're going to start by summing the forces in the x. So what we want to do is sum the forces in the x. And so generally, that's the way you start all these problems. So you're going to sum the forces in the x. And the reason we're doing that is we know that the force of friction. So let me explain why I'm doing this. So the force of friction, the formula for it, is equal to your coefficient of friction, in this case, mu sub k, times the normal force. So if we want to find the force of friction, we first have to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. OK? And so the way we do that is by summing up the forces. And so I know that the sum of the forces in the X uh, are going to be like certain values. And in that, we're going to be able to solve for mu sub K. And you'll, you'll see how that works in a second. But basically, whenever you have a problem like this, you're just going to start by summing the forces. So the sum of the forces in the X, we know F equals MA. So the sum of the forces in this direction are equal MA X, or essentially the acceleration in the X direction. Now, the acceleration in the X direction they give it to us here is 0.3. So we know that, and then all we have to do is sum the forces in the x. So what are the different forces acting in the x direction? So if we look on our graph, right, we labeled this as our x, so this way. We have the force of friction going this way. And so generally, if it's going to the right, you want to say positive. If it's left, it's negative. It's just easier to follow that way. So minus the force of friction because it's going left, right? And we imagine this is right, this is left. And then what other force do we have acting in the x direction? Uh, in this plane. So notice the normal force and FG of Y are both um, on the Y. So they don't, they don't, they, they're not on the X. So we don't have to include it. 
but fg of x is. And so keep in mind, gravity is going this way, so fg of x would be down this way. So it's to the right. So we would add it. So plus fg of x. And so you'll see we have max equals minus the force of friction plus fg of x. So let's label this out a bit more. So max equals, what is the force of friction equal to? Minus, it's going to be minus mu sub k times the normal force plus fg of x. So now I'm going to explain how we find fg of x. Because notice the reason we did this is we needed the force of friction included in this equation in order to solve for mu sub k. That's what we're going to do. So we need to find the normal force and we need to find what fg of x is equal to. So both of those values, and then we'll have everything to solve for mu sub k. And then once we get mu sub k, plug it back in, we'll have the force of friction. So that's the general idea of why we, 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 why we did this. So how do we find fg of x? So you want to look at it like a triangle. So if you see this here, I'm going to redraw this, but as a triangle. Okay, so I went ahead and drew the triangle here. So notice what we have. So this triangle essentially is this triangle right here. So this isn't exactly 90 degrees, but just imagine it is. And so this right here, this line corresponds to this line. fg of x is right here. So that's that. And then this is fg of y. And so you need to know that this incline angle is the same as this angle right here, which corresponds to this on this triangle. So know that we're trying to solve for fg of x, right, to plug it in here. So the way we do that is by using trig. So there's two functions, sine and cosine, which we're going to use. For the first one, we're just going to use sine. So notice that the sine of an angle, you should know this from uh, geometry, but sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you look at our angle, the opposite of it is fg of x over the hypotenuse. So we have the opposite, fg of x, over the hypotenuse, f of g. If you multiply both sides, you'll see that fg of x equals fg sine of 27. So we have fg of x, we just solve for it. So basically, it's f of g multiplied by the sine of the inclined angle. And so you should know f of g which is the force due to gravity is just equal to mg. So it's mass times uh, acceleration due to gravity. So essentially fg of x is mg sine of 27. That's what fg of x is. And so now that we have it, we can plug it in. So mg sine of 27. And so if you notice our equation, now we have this. And so we know these two values. So all we're missing now is f sub n. So we have to solve for that. Now, how do we do that? So the way we do that is by doing some of the forces in the y instead of the x. So we're going to do some of the forces in the y. And so f equals ma again, so ma y. But what you should notice here is we're only moving along the, this x-axis here. So we only move this way. So we actually don't move at all in the y. And when you don't move at all in the y, your velocity is zero in the y. You're not moving. Therefore, the acceleration must be zero. So ma y is really just m zero. Right, times zero because a y is zero so this whole thing is just equal to zero so instead of it being ma it's just zero so we have some of the forces in the y we want to add those up so what do we have in the y so we only have two forces the normal force here and f g of y all the other forces are along the x okay cool so let's add them in so if it goes upwards we like to say positive so f sub n i'm going to call positive here and then fg of y is down, so it's negative. And what you should see is that, moving this to the other side, f sub n equals fg of y. And that makes sense, because the forces have to be equal to each other, or else it would move in one of the directions. Because it, But it only moves along the x, therefore we know they have to be equal. So we found fg of x here. Now we need to find fg of y. So going back to our triangle, how do we find fg of y now? So we used sine before, and as I mentioned before, we're going to use cosine this time. So cosine of an angle, you should remember, is so, co, so adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is this side, fg of y over the hypotenuse. So we have fg of y over fg. So if you multiply both sides, it'll cancel. And so you have fg cosine of 27 equals fg of y so your normal force is just f of g which we determined or we said was mg cosine of 27 before 
And so now we have the normal force, right? And so drawing this triangle is really helpful in order to understand how we get these values. But so we have F sub n now. So rewriting our entire equation, I'm going to zoom out a bit. We have ma of x equals minus mu sub k times the normal force, mg cos of 27 plus mg sine of 27. Cool. So now what we're going to want to do is move this to the other side. So we have max minus mg sine of 27 equals minus mu sub k times mg cos of 27. So all we did was move this to the other side. Now we're going to divide by uh, mg cos of 27. So we, we're trying to solve for mu sub k, as I said before. So we need it by itself. And so now that we have that, this minus sign, we can also minus the side to get rid of it. So you're going to find that mu sub k equals minus max minus mg sine of 27 divided by mg cos of 27. So there's your formula you're going to use. So we just want to plug in our values now. So minus m, you should recall, is the mass, which is 25, times the acceleration in the x, which is 0.3. So let me go back here. 0.3 minus its mass, 25, times gravity, 9.8. Let me zoom out a bit. Times the sine of 27, divided by the mass, 25, times g, which is 9.8 times the cos of 27. So cool. Now we just got to plug this in your calculator. So let me go ahead and do that. So 25 times 0.3 uh, minus 25 times 9.8 times the sine of 27 divided by 25 times 9.8 times the cos of 27. Yeah, cool. So minus that value you're going to have mu sub k, or your coefficient of kinetic friction, being equal to 0.475. So keep in mind, coefficient of uh, friction, they don't have units. So 0.475, that's your value. So you can round it however you want. But that's part A, or just the first part. So we have our coefficient of kinetic friction, and now we need to find the force of friction. So uh, force of friction, the formula, is mu sub k times the normal force. So we just plug it into that. Let me do it up here, actually. So the force of friction we know is mu sub k, 0.475, multiplied by the normal force, which we found is right here, mg cos of 27. So the mass is 25 times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, times the cos of 27. So plugging that in now, 25 times 9.8, times the cos of 27. So you'll get 103.72 or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So about 104 newtons. You can round it however you want. Keep in mind, I use the exact value I got from my calculator in this, so it might be a little different, but essentially the force of friction is 104 newtons. And so keep in mind, it's impeding the motion. So that's gonna be your force of friction and I believe, yeah, so coefficient of kinetic friction here, mu sub k, let's label that. Um, yeah, so 104 newtons. Or sorry, that's not the coefficient of kinetic friction. This is the force of friction, not mu sub k, my bad. So this is going to be your force of friction. And then your coefficient of kinetic friction is down here. So yeah, so this is going to be your answers. So both of these right here, 104 newtons and 0.475. So... These are going to be your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.